Known as the pioneer of rock and roll, Buddy Holly was one of the most memorable American singers and songwriters during the 50s. Throughout his life, he made a big impact, but did not have the luck to live a full and healthy life. He was born as Charles Hardin Holly in 1936 in Texas. Bobby got his talent originally from his family because they were also associated with music from a young age. He learned to play the violin, guitar, and piano ever since he was a child. In the year 1949, he was introduced to Bob Montgomery when he was attending Hutchison High School. Both had a love for music and paired up to create a duo called Buddy and Bob. At first, they were influenced by bluegrass music and usually sang duets in small clubs in their neighborhood and high school shows. His big moment came when the pair opened for Billy Haley and his Comets at a rock show that was organized in his neighborhood. During his performance, Buddy got spotted right away and was offered a contract with Decca Records. This would be the beginning of his success in music, when he was releasing some records in Norman Petty Studios located in New Mexico. One of the most successful songs the band released was called That'll Be The Day. The song's title was originally inspired by a phrase in the hit movie titled The Searchers. The studio Buddy worked with had strong connections with the music industry and believed that linking a song to a hit movie would make their song successful. That is the reason why he contacted many labels and studios to help with the advertisement for the song. This sent Buddy to eventually be signed with Coral Records along with his band. During this period, the song That'll Be The Day became an international success, and Buddy and his band finally made headlines. The talented artist would usually release sophisticated music for its day and use many instruments to make the song feel like a true rock and roll song. He would go as far as playing the Celesta instrument, which is heard in the song every day. In the band, he was the lead singer and also played the guitar. His role as a guitarist is mostly known in songs like Not Fade Away and Peggy Sue, but he usually released the typical boy meets girl songs that were trending at the time, but some songs held a deeper meaning with a more complex harmony to it. These unique songs were featured with a weird hiccup technique that is commonly used in modern days. However, in the 50s, this technique, which consisted of a repeated uh sound, used to highlight words during the song and was mostly used by rock bands. Regarding the crickets, this technique can be heard in the song Rave On. Buddy also managed to be one of the first rock musicians to support his African-American audience. This all happened by accident when he booked at New York's Apollo Theater. After that, he would manage to calm the racial divide when it came to music. The band's music was flourishing during the late 50s, and Buddy had already released many hit songs. That is why, in 1958, he decided to go on a tour in the UK with the band he was a part of. Two of the people that were fans of the Crickets and had been a part of the concert in 1958 were Paul McCartney and John Lennon. Both of them were influenced by Buddy and would later become one of the most famous impactful singers of all time, known for being a part of the Beatles. Interestingly enough, the name The Beatles was inspired by Buddy's band The Crickets. Not only that, but the Beatles made a perfect cover of Buddy's song, Words of Love, which was so close to the original version. During that time, even Rolling Stones did a cover from one of Buddy's songs, named Not Fade Away. Throughout his career as a singer, Buddy's style and image were more controlled than Elvis, for the purpose to be more impactful to the youth and competitive with other Western singers of the day. His image worked and was held as an example regarding youth culture in Europe and America for many decades. His impact was mostly reflected in the new wave movement, including other artists such as Marshall Crenshaw, Elvis Costello, and the members of bands like The Turtles and The Birds. At the same year, Bobby did the tour and also decided to get married to Maria Elena Santiago. A year later, he split up with the Crickets and decided to continue touring solo and from time to time with other performers such as J.P. Richardson and Richie Valens. Another member of Buddy's audience named Bobby Zimmerman would later be known as the famous Bob Dylan. Buddy's cause of death was a very interesting one and will most likely stay in our memory forever. 
On February 2nd, Buddy was about to go on tour with a couple of his friends, which were also musical artists at the time. While goofing around, they decided to play a game of chance regarding who would fly a plane to their next performing destination and who would ride an uncomfortable, unheated bus during that cold winter period. The winners of the game were Valens, Richardson, and Buddy. At first, all of them were excited that they didn't have to freeze on a bus for hours, but little did they know they were getting excited for the plane that would send them to tragedy. On the day of the takeoff, there was an unusual blizzard that blinded the pilot's view. This led to the plane crashing in a cornfield, killing Buddy and the rest of the passengers instantly. Not only that, but at the time of Buddy's death, his wife was already expecting their first child together. The stress of his suffering wife eventually led her to go through a miscarriage. The funeral of Buddy was later held in his hometown in Texas. His tombstone had his full name spelled, as well as a carving from his favorite guitar he used during his career. Buddy also has a statue in memory of him located in downtown Lubbock's Walk of Fame. His tragic death inspired the movie American Pie, sung by artist Don McLean in 1971. The day of Buddy's death, February 3rd, was also called the day the music died by fans all around the world. His last performance before hopping on the ill-fated plane was located at a dance hall called the Surf Ballroom, which opened its doors ever since the height of the big band era. Surf Ballroom is still open to this day and continues to put on shows, as well as still dedicate something special to Buddy Holly as a memory of his last performance. Do you think Buddy felt any pain during the time he crashed? Tell us what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up so we can continue releasing new interesting videos like this. As always, thanks for watching.